Hey, welcome back to Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and Satim and Nolly. We're having a great conversation about mindset, about where do you want to be? Where are you now? Get real with yourself. Are you seriously happy or are you kind of frustrated? What, what's it going to be? Because guess what, my friends, it could get worse before it gets better. For all of you that have been furloughed without your permission, I might add, it's one of the things I love about real estate and being self-employed is I, you know, I can fire myself every once in a while because I want to go swimming in the lake or go spend some time with my kids, but I typically hire myself back and I do it with my permission. I know a lot of good people out there that are getting hammered in this COVID virus land without their permission. Now, the question be, is going to beg itself, and what are you going to do about it? Are you going to cry? Are you going to quit? Are you going to fight? You're going to fight for your family. You're going to fight for yourself, more importantly. And so, Stemma, you know, I'm curious. What would you do for people that are afraid to be vulnerable? They have a lot of talent. They have a lot of skill sets. But their biggest challenge is self-esteem. And you know what I find is most of the time it's their friends and family that are the ones bringing them down, saying, you know, oh, no, don't go sell real estate. That's commission-based. You need that $14, $15 an hour job. That's the key because it's predictable. And so they listen and then they don't ever blossom. So what do we do to get people that deep down know they can do it, but they're just scared? I'll just tell you a story. So two stories to, to illustrate this. My sons, when we moved to our home here in Southern California, right, they, the, the oldest, my oldest son was like eight years old. And it was amazing because we got here and he would go upstairs, but he would be afraid to go upstairs. You know, Hey, go grab this, go grab a shirt, go grab some socks. And he would take the, his younger brother who was three at the time. Hey, can you come with me upstairs? I'm like, what's he going to do for you? And he was afraid. And so instead of just saying, there's no, there's no clown or boogeyman. I would just logically say, what are you afraid of? You can tell daddy. And he's like, the clown, right? The clown from it. Right? I think it's what, Pennywise. I don't know the name of the clown. I haven't seen the movie, but the big old clown. I'm like, okay, why are you afraid of it? Because I feel like it's in my closet. Okay. All right, let's let's go. Let's go see if it's up there. And of course, I'd pretend like it was in there and freak them out. And and then as they got older, they were still afraid. Like they were still afraid. And I'm like, hey, what are you afraid of? And you know, it's like adults. I'm like, we're, my, our kids are afraid of a boogeyman under the bed or in the closet or in the dark. And if you just ask questions long enough, they can figure it out for themselves. No, it's not real. There's no one there. But when I believe there's a boogeyman there, I'm afraid and I feel afraid. And when I'm afraid because of a story that I'm making up about a boogeyman in the closet, uh, I don't take action. I don't go into the room. Well, it's the same thing with real estate agents or mortgage professionals or anyone who's got to take that leap of faith. It's like they think some boogeyman is going to hunt them down and wipe them out if they like, take this leap of faith. So the story number two, uh, and we had immersion this year, Titan immersion, and one of the guys who showed up to Titan immersion had just started being a real estate agent. He was a firefighter, right? He lives in the Midwest. Firefighter turned real estate agent went all in, left the, the good paying job, and then he emptied his account, borrowed money, and left his, a brand new credit card to come to immersion. And was in tears and saying, he said, hey, I need this because I need to accelerate my my results with real estate or else I'm, I got to go back to being, you know, getting a job. He was all in. He was afraid. Everyone told him he was crazy. And we are now six months later. Dude's averaging three to four deals a month. He's already flipping homes. He's partnered with people who have got money to do that whole real estate investing side. Loving life. I mean, just body is more, he's more jacked and ripped than he was when he started. Happy as can be. And it's like, what's the difference? You see, fear will always exist while we are human beings. Always. You'll never get rid of it. The only difference is powerful people who produce results, they act regardless of the fear. It's interesting. A good buddy of mine, Fletcher Ellingson, is another uh, business coach, life coach. He says something along that lines. You can't have courage without fear. Courage is a good thing, right? But it doesn't exist without fear. 
because if uh, and, you know, and, if, yeah, fear is always look. Fear is always going to exist, always. So for someone who's afraid, look, I could tell you, go, should go do it, but just like, just take a real powerful approach. Just question why you're afraid. You're afraid because of what you, what you might look like, what people might say about you, what what you think they might say about you. What if you suck? A lot of people just don't want to be seen starting in the beginning. A lot of people don't want to be seen starting small, but everyone starts crawling before they sit up and walk and then before they jog and run and sprint. So to anyone who's just got talent and you're afraid, it's like, look, you're going to either worship fear and let fear be your God, or you can let God be your God, which he says, right? I've not given you this, this, this scare of fear, but a power and of love and a sound mind. And look, there's every time you're afraid, just ask what? am I really afraid of? And if you'll just dig hard enough on that question, what am I really afraid of? You're going to figure out it's no different than your child being afraid of a clown or the boogeyman in the closet. It's interesting, isn't it? How when you're young, I think I heard this on Rogan or something on a podcast where when you're young and full of youthful exuberance and don't really know anything, you have all the courage in the world. You just, nothing can get you down, you know, go for it mentality. And then as you get older and a little wiser and a little more mature and you're out of your twenties into your thirties, maybe forties into fifties, maybe life has taught you some stuff. You're probably a heck of a lot smarter than you were when you had absolute zero fear coming out of high school. And you maybe were a big fish, little pond athlete, for example. However, you're now afraid because you're, even though you're twice, three times, 10 times smarter and wiser than you were, but now life is getting to you. It's a fascinating dichotomy that exists as we grow up when it really should be the opposite, right? When you're young, you should be more afraid. And as you know more, you should be more confident and therefore less afraid. But it's kind of funny how the human condition works backwards uh, to me. Yeah. And like, I, People like the, the the last distinction I'll just share to me is if you're really clear about the life you want to live, there's just zero room for fear. Like you've got to go take action in spite of it. And the only way you get better at something is to take the action. Like you learn how to ride a bike by falling down and get back up. You learn how to walk by falling down and getting back up. And that's the same thing with being an entrepreneur, business owner, taking a leap of faith. Like fear to me is the it's the it kills more people than pretty much anybody. It kills more dreams than anything else. Yeah, no, and this 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 land of the COVID virus, you know, California is a lot like Washington. A lot of craziness going on. A lot of there's going to be a lot of casualties in business in this. You know, it wasn't their fault. It's funny though. There's really two types of people, isn't there? You know, they're going to be just dwelling on that and let it kick its kick your butt, or they're going to maybe pivot and maybe start over. And you, that's the only thing you can do. What would you like, say to somebody that's, that's in, in that position that's got to start over? That the reality, like when I faced 10 years ago, you faced 10 years ago, I looked in the mirror and went, uh-oh. I didn't see this tidal wave as big as it is. I saw a little tidal wave, but this one was big. And it knocked me straight into the cliffs. What would you say to those people right now in the last couple of minutes that we yeah, got I'll, here? I would say to them, there's a gift in every situation if you're willing to find the gift. I, I say this with all humility and sincerity. I'm so grateful for COVID. I'm so grateful for COVID. My business is better. My business is leaner. I am leaner. My people are happier. Like you, you always come out on top when you have this attitude of, I'm going to find the gift in the situation. And if you happen to lose everything, congratulations. No successful person that I know has gone unscathed. They've lost everything. They've wagered everything. They've bet on themselves. They've gotten back up. They've gotten knocked down. And so, again, it comes back to what do you want? Like, if you want to be the person that lost it all in COVID and never recovered, that's on you. But if you want to be a success story and someone who's like, man, I'm doing it, I'm making it happen, that's on you too, 100%. So I would just tell someone who's maybe losing everything, like, it's not the end. You are 100% in charge of your life and what you do with it right now. Yeah, last time I checked, none of us are immortal. 
so we might as well make the best of what we got. And if we have to pivot, maybe there was a reason we had to pivot. I know personally, I can say this with all the humility of the world that a, I have humility and B that I, it led me to help other people in a very different way. And ironically, when I started focusing differently and not looking inward, looking outward to how it affected other people, my actions and my leadership, that's when things started to click. So it, I would never have maybe had that gift if I hadn't gone bankrupt in, in 10 years ago. So anyway, man, I really, as I've said many times, you're one of the greatest. I'm excited to meet you in person. I met you uh, again. I met you once over with Shane Kidwell on the other side. And uh, you are just gracious. You're a gracious individual. You're an inspiration to many people. I want you to know, guys, if you're thinking about um, even just reading some of his material, go online, get some of Satima Nali's information. You can uh, track him down on his website, S-E-T-E-M-A-G-A-L-I.com. It's, uh, it's very nice. You know, I gave you, I think I texted you yesterday and asked if you'd do this, uh, Satima. You made room for it in your extraordinarily busy schedule. Thanks again, my friend. Thank you so much. All right, take care of yourself. Hey, we'll be right back with Home Sweet Home and Russ McClellan. we got Prime Lending coming up with Michael Maher and seeing what's going on in the world of finance. Home Sweet Home. Thanks, Keller Williams. I love my dream home. 